plugin so you will get an idea. Now church attitude of building is being designed in the part uh, will be considered. Now building ha will have a one door and four windows on the north and south walls. Okay, so it has a, it, 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 it has those windows. Okay, let me draw these uh, now, now these buildings because this is very important now that we need to draw these three dimensions because they have given you this plan view and all. So let me draw the 3D part of it. So I hope you will get a more idea of, of the 3D part of it. So uh, let me check if I can uh, draw it up the, the 3D if it is uh, like more kind of um, uh, church building. So let me draw up this 3D and we have got this we got like let's say this I hope you will can imagine this and we have this and hopefully that's this one okay so I hope this is church building we have this stained glass window here that's we need to find the pressure on this stained glass window so we need to find this is the glass window and we need to find the pressure on it that's the first questions that they ask you to find the pressure on this glass window and uh, let me put this one is uh, yeah, kind of uh, along this line like this you have this waste east um, uh, let me check uh, north and south so if I have uh, if I put the north here if I put the north if I put the north here, south, east, west, here. Yeah. So we have a north on here, south here. Okay, so that's what the that's what the buildings and uh, we are just wants to consider the western west wind only. Okay, so that's what the question is saying. Now from the questions, 23 meters, we have 23 meters here. I can show it to you in the examples, and this side is 24 meters. Right, so um, let me go back to the examples that uh, we have those details 23, uh, 24, 23 meters. And now we say that we have a uh, one door uh, 900 by, let me copy this one. Uh, let me copy this one and let's take this one down here so we know what we are talking about because going up and down to all the way up is let's paste here okay so now he's better here so it says that now it says that you have a uh, one door uh, and four window on the north and south walls so one door uh, there is a one door here uh, this is one door and four windows one, two, three, and four windows, right? And the door, uh, four windows have a total area 1.8 by 1.2. So 1.8 by 1.2 meter square, that is the total area of this window, not the individual area, but the total area of that window. And the door has a uh, one door 9.9 .9 by 2.1. So this is 0.9 by 2.1 meter square. And please note, this is on the north side, the south side, same windows and same doors are, are located on the other side as well. And stained glass window 2.4 by 1.2. So this is 2.4 meter by 1.2 meter. That's the area of the stained glass window on the waste wall. Yep, so that is, that is our waste wall. The double door on the east side. So we have a double door here. Uh, on the east side, we have a uh, double door here. I'm not showing it, but you can see on the east side double door and that door uh, has a 1.8 by 2.1. So 1.8 meter by 2.1 meter uh, of that area. Uh, uh, the site is on this one. I think this is all we, we, we take into account. So we just need to find the ultimate wind pressure on the stained glass window and net of fleet per meter for ultimate wind load on a highly loaded portal frame. So we need to find that, um, find the two things, pressure and, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and uh, uh, what we call uh, 
um, on the uplift, uh, uplift of force on the roof. So we just basically need to work through the windward wall and the and the pressures. Okay, let's let's start with the with the equation of pressures. Now, uh, as you can see in the theory, we use this Bernoulli's equations to calculate the pressures. Where is the pressures? I can show it to you in the close in the standard so you can familiar where the pressure equation is sitting. At the front, there you go, close 2.4.1. So close 2.4.1, design wind pressure close 2.4.1, it has P equal to 0.5 density of air, we design theta square, C fix, C dynamic, okay? Now in this case, uh, let me open the one that is I have it here. So in this case, this this is the uh, 0.5 is just a half. Density of air is given here, uh, which is taken as 1.2 kg per meter cube. So that's the density is given to you. Design wind speed is meter per second. So we calculated C fig. We're going to calculate the C fig. Uh, by, uh, by by using the other equation which I showed you and see dy dynamic we always take it one for our case and please note the unit you don't need to change any units here you plug the values as it is but once you plug the value you will get the unit in pascals that is written here so all these if you plug the value you will get the pascals now here I like to put very important notes here look you don't need to blindly plug the values and you just you just get the job done you might end up with p because if you plug 0.5 and rho is rho is rho is uh, 1.2 now standards say design wind speed should be not be less than 30 meter per second right if you know from our our examples that standard saying that you should have this minimum 30 minimum 30 meter per second if you remember that minimum 30 meter per second in close 2.3 so if you at least plug 30 there was that equation. At least you plug 30 here because you can't plug 20 here. So 0 0.5 times 1.2 times 30 square and dynamic is 1. You always get some value. Let me plug that value for you. So 0 0.5 times 1.2 times 30. 30 is the utmost that you need to do it in square. Don't forget the square. So 540. So if you come up with saying that people, I will take P equal to 50 C fig. Ooh, very low. Something wrong. Go back and check it. Here is a quick check. In the exam or someone sitting said I got 50 C fig. Forget about dynamic is 1. So you said P equal to 50 C fig. It's very low. Something wrong. Check it. You would need 540 is just the starting point. You can't get less than 540. If it is thousands, yes, it's kind of. Okay, that's okay. It is, this, you, are, you, are, you, are, you are on the correct path. But someone said it's 1500 to 50,000. Oh, something is wrong. It's too high speed. Okay, so so just 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 stand and just to keep a check on your numbers, not not just blindly just just plug and plug and chuck the values. Okay, so this is a quick overview. This you might end up taking 540 to 500 uh, C feet C dynamics. So that's the quick one. Now let me copy this example, uh, these equations here. So P equal to 0 0.5 rho of air. Uh, we design theta square C fig C dynamic, right? And let's plug the value 0.5 and density of at 1.2. We design theta square is we have 46. We calculated that 46 square C fig we need to calculate and C dynamic is 1. So if I just use the calculator is a uh, is, uh, uh, 0 0.5 times 1.2 times 46 square times C dynamic 1, you get 1269.6. 1269.6 C fig Pascal. Let's put the, just the P Pascal. Okay, so this is the equation for the pressure. Quick, nice one, easy one, and 1269. Let's check it out. Yes, 1269, close to thousands. It's okay. Not bad. Not bad. That's that's good. That's good. There is no any any big issues so far. I, I, I we noticed. Okay, so that's all good. Now C fig. 
what we call c fix if you turn the couple of page over now c fix has a two different uh, scenario if you go to the section number uh, now uh, aerodynamic safe factor c fix is uh, section number 5 when you go to the c fix here in the clause 5.2 you have two different c fix value one for internal pressures and another one for external pressures like when you have a structures you when you when you have a closed structures uh, let me tell you something here, the story for this one. You have two kind of pressures on the external pressure and internal pressures, right? So external pressures because you your heat is wall uh, hit the wall, so therefore it is external pressures. Internal pressures you might have opening, so it will have a suction or it will have a pressure. So same thing here. If I can show you some uh, some uh, positive pressure and negative pressures. Uh, let me uh, show you here. So, positive pressures, the, the, these figures will tell you, this is the positive external pressures. What does it mean? When the pressure hit the wall, when the, hit, when, when the pressure push your walls or the roof, you will have positive pressures. When pressure pull your wall, when the pressure pull your wall out, then you will have ex external uh, pressure, negative pressure. Positive pressure pull, uh, push, uh, negative pressure pull. Uh, another one said positive internal pressures. Um, let's say internal pressures. When you have a push from inside, you will have positive. When you go uh, outside, like pull from inside, you will have negative pressures. And then uh, let me tell you another story. That positive internal pressures inflate the building. It's like a balloon. If you have air going inside and it's tried to inflate the building, it's positive pressures, right? When you have a uh, internal pressure, we try to deflate the buildings. Okay, so then it's try to squash the buildings. Then it will have a negative pressures. In another word, positive pressure is greater than the atmospheric pressures. Okay, and the negative pressure is less than the atmospheric pressures. And if you tell me the from the physics, the atmospheric pressures at sea level is 101, 300 pascals. So that's the quick notes. So I hope you understand the concept of Positive pressure, negative pressure. You don't really remember these figures is given in the standards. This is a positive external pressures. When you try to push, opposite arrow is a negative pressures. And these are uh, uh, positive internal pressures. Opposite is, is a negative internal pressure. So I hope it is helped. The, uh, I hope you understand the sign convention of positive and negative, uh, both for external and internal. So C fig has a two equations now. Now let me, these equations, we're going to use it over, oh sorry, we're going to use it this equation over and over. Now, let's say C fig has a two equation because when you have a in, when you want to calculate the external pressure, let's say PE 1269.6 C fig E. Okay, where this is coming from, C fig E, because you have this, uh, because you have this uh, C fig E. That is, that's these equations that we're going to use to calculate the external pressures. So external pressures can be calculated by just changing C fig to E and internal pressures can be calculated. This value does not change. So C fig I. Okay. I hope you understand that. Nothing big difference and sign conventions will be controlled by this C fig and C I. Okay. And we're going to combine these pressures based on the sign convention. So far so good. Pressures and we just plug those values 0.5 rho and we designed theta and we got this value and probably this should be around 1000. So, okay, uh, that's that's just a quick check. So in, we are on the good part. Now let's do the first one external pressures. Let's do the external pressures. To calculate the external pressures, we need to calculate C fig E. Like on the church building, when the when this when this wind hit on the, from the west side, what would happen to this 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 stained glass window? It has two kind of pressures. One coming from outside, another one coming from inside. Where is the inside coming from? The building would be permeable. Building might have opening. So you have internal pressures, you have external pressures. So both pressures will go into. And this stained glass window, we need to find out the difference between two pressures. One from outside, one from inside. From outside, maybe push and pull. We need to find it out positive and negative. So that's good. Now, C fig E. 
is equal to where is the equation for c phi g by the way c phi g we call it aerodynamic safe factors okay this is called aerodynamic safe factors uh, this uh, c phi is taken into account because you can look at that pressure equation what is c phi c phi is basically take into account the account for the for the for the shape and size of the building so different shape of that one that we need to take into account so i will copy this equation c phi g from here c p e k a k c e k l and k p let me copy that equations c p e k a k c e k l and k p so there are total five k value and c p e value now first of all uh, first question is to find the uh, find the pressure on this glass window right and this glass window sitting on the windward wall if you look at that is a windward wall because wind is coming from here so we need to calculate the pressure for the windward wall okay so that's fine let's me calculate the cpe now we going to take it these factors one by one to calculate cp cpe so let's get it cpe now cpe value what is that called cpe let me tell you if you turn the couple of page over there are uh, total i think how many six different set of external pressure coefficient there are total how many total six you don't need to remember but i'm just mentioning that there are total six different cpe value depending on which Press where pressures you want to calculate. If you want to calculate the pressure on windward wall, you can use the CPE value from windward wall here. If you turn the page over, it will have a CPE value for leeward wall. Okay, second table. If you want to calculate the CPE value for side wall, you have table number three, five point two A, B, and C that are for walls. Okay, so table five point two is just for walls. Five point two A, windward wall. Five point two B leeward wall and 5.2 C is a side wall. So total three CPE value is done here. I will explain you those one by one. And then another three tables is for roof. 5.3 A is just for the roof. There is another one for roof and there is another one for roof. How, how, why they have three different? Because they they have a low slopes. So if you have a if you have a house, let's say this is a slope. Uh, this is the slope like a. Like uh, uh, W is this this slope, right? If you have a low slope like this flat roof, like this flat roof, like this, then you have alpha less than 10 degree, right? So you have a very high area for wind to pass on. Then alpha is greater than 10. You have this kind of roof, so this kind of roofs, like very uh, alpha value which is sitting here. Alpha is here. Sorry, uh, alpha is here. Then you have alpha is greater than 10. Then you need to go. So you look at the alpha is greater than all the wind gonna hit here, right? And then it will have a, it will have a, it will it will have hard. So you have different uh, slope um, values because you will have different 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 values. And here you have a um, uh, alpha greater than 10 for heap roof. Okay, I will tell you gable and heap roof because there are two kinds of uh, particular roof. So that is the that is the CP. So you have total six tables to choose the CP values. Okay, table 5.2 A, B, and C is for walls. 5.3 is for roofs. Okay, now which one to go for? Right, because there are six tables. So how do we going to take it? Now look at where you want to find the pressures. Now I like to find the pressures on the windward walls. Okay, because wind is coming from here, stained glass window sitting on the window, windward wall. So let's take the windward wall pressure. So, so for that CPE value coming from windward wall. Good news, CPE is very simple table, right? Very simple table. That if your H value is less than 25 meters, yes, our H value is less than 25 meters, and for building on the ground, yes, our building is on the ground. Point saver when the wind speed taken as z equal to h. You can look at that tables here. So you have point saver when z equal to h. Okay. So most of our course you always take windward wall point saver straight away. And look at this positive value. Positive means you have positive pressures, meaning that CPE value is point saver. What does it means? That you always there is never you always have this positive pressure here on the windward wall always. 
right that's what 0.7 positive is telling that you have positive and where is the sign conventions uh, if you remember that figures you don't need to remember that one positive look at this is pushing the wall windward wall so it's always positive okay so this positive 0.7 the physical meaning of this positive 0.7 is saying that on the windward wall your wind going to push the wall so that is always create the positive external pressure so 0.7 okay you don't need to remember that but it's just um also wants you to feel what those values are meaning physically on the structures so that's good cpe dot ka what is kf okay let's go back to uh so if, so if you come to the close 5.2.a good news ka is only used for roof and side walls so we can't use ka value for uh windward wall leeward walls uh we we don't need to worry just for roof and side walls only we need to we need to worry about for all other cases ka equal to 1 so we we just take a ka equal to straight away 1 now what is what is this ka and what why they are not allow us to use it on the windward wall so is only used for external pressure that's fine it has nothing to do with the internal pressure that fine this account for the wind pressure on large tributary area so you can think of you can think of uh, what can i say you can think of the windward wall generally the area of the windward wall is smaller than the roof if you are taking typical um, uh, buildings or or structures then you have a large roof where the wind going to be exposed to so the roof is a critical side wall also generally very large okay they, they have flats and they just go through so therefore the the uh the standards wants you to to look into it if you have large area you can reduce reduce the reduce the pressures because you can think that if you have if you have a, if you have very small area then heat uh, the wind will come and hit on this small area then it will be very damaging so you have very small area damaging one don't reduce your pressures but if you have a very large area wind is coming flowing through this one is very effective here but and then it will go 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 on this one and very large area distributed the pressure so he says standard said okay you can reduce your pressure by by 10% or 20% not more than that so that's that's what they said if you have a very large area that is particularly come on the side wall and windward roof you can reduce your area uh, reduce your pressure this is reduced because you are multiplying ka with to find the pressure so if it is one don't reduce the pressures because it's less than 10 is small area if you have big area then you can reduce by 10% and 20% so that's what it says so for that case we take ka equal to 1 because we are working on the windward wall so let me go to this let's take 1 because we have windward wall and it's just apply to the roof and roof and um, roof and side walls and i hope you understand why we uh, kce uh, let me keep my 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 solution red otherwise i don't screw up any factors while i'm talking okay uh uh combination factors okay let me go back to the one page okay so if you go to the close 5.4.3 is the kce xm combination factors now what the what this xm combination factor is is this uh, this about okay let me tell you something um so there are two tables by the way you have table 5.5 and um, and uh, this table 5 oh there are uh, some design cases up to a b c and d and there are design cases for uh, for for this uh, i think i believe that roof is only one surface okay so i think there are uh, there are some cases here where you have two effective surface so when you have a two effective surface you take it 0.9 i will tell you what is that you can reduce by 10 percentage and if you have three effective surface you take it point eight so you can reduce the pressure by 20% what does it account for this one uh, they say that um, all the wind when the load calculated are worst case and it is not always reasonably possible for worst to occur on the every surface at once so it says that if you if, if you consider the worst case scenario it's when the wind blows is not always considered only one surface there is worst case like a window or that that is is generally you can you can have worst case with it with it with it two three surface at the same time so you you can combine them so let's say combination factor have to do with the fact that all of our wind loads are worst case 
it is not likely that you are going to have a worst case wind load on every single surface of the structure at exactly the same time right uh, so that account for that fact that you uh, would not case wind load on the side wall at the same time it is not worst case wind on the on the roof so when you have a worst case on the side the roof has nothing to do the roof is not no, no, not affected. So you can combine them. Some are not affected. Some are affected. You can combine them. So, so that's the combination factor. There is a one catch though. One catch is saying that look, everyone try to reduce pressure. Someone might say, okay, let's play smart. Let's take this 0.8, reduce 20% pressure here. Okay, very good. No problem. That's that sounds good. Standard is allowing. Then they said, okay, reduce again 20%. Your 40% pressure is gone by these two factors. Now the standard has given you the catch saying that the product of your ka product of ka and product of kc should be not less than 0.8 so you can take either one of them you can't take 0.8 and 0.8 if you take 0.8 times 0 0.8 0 0.64 and the standard don't allow you right so there is a catch here so you can't just reduce the pressure here in the area reduction factors and then you come say let's say combine this one and because worst case scenario and so on let's take the point eight here no standard don't allow you make sure that when you when you multiply k and kc it should not be less than point eight okay so that is but for our case we are just taking the single surface we not need to worry about uh, just the one effective surface here because um, uh, because we uh, and again it is true for Basically, we don't need to worry about these these KCE factors because we are just working on this glass window. So KCE equal to one. But I explain you that how that's that that's there's um now local local pressure factors for claddings uh, only applicable for external pressure. That's fine. So what does it saying that you have a table here to calculate KL? That might be the interesting one. Look when you when you when the pressure applied, it's it's very it's very concentrated if you if you have a have a roof and if you take this corner they they will peel off here right because it's very small area uh, effective so so standard saying that if you are pressures um, uh, harder on the small area right and can be average it out to be on larger area so so standard state that if you are calculating the pressure on very small area let's say area is less than or equal to 0 0.25a you need to increase the pressure by 50 percentage that's what it says that okay your your pressure is increased significantly uh, when you are considering the smaller cross section area now let's 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 work it out area is less than 0 0.25 these conditions we need to check for kl area is less than 0 0.25 a square right what is a here and what is capital a okay, let me check okay so let's say this area area a is the area of your stained glass window so if you go back here area of the stained glass window was 2.4 by 1.2 so that's good 2.4 meters by 1.2 meters so if i just use the calculator 2.4 times by 1.2 you get 2.88 meter square so first one done now we need to calculate this small a what where do we get the small a informations now the small a that you will get it is here there is a little line written here that the value of the dimension a is the minimum of 0.2 b 0.2 d and h okay that sounds good okay let me write it down minimum of 0.2 b or 0.2 d or small h right now what is this bd is standing for so for that i will take you through the uh, one uh, one figures that i like it so if you come back here on this page of our figure 5.2 in this one so when the wind blows then this perpendicular length is represent b and parallel is the d i hope you understand that so when your wind is coming from here this is b and this one d same here wind is coming here perpendicular b this is d so i hope it is helpful wind is coming here this is b parallel is d i hope it is helpful you understand that right wind is coming here this line the line that first one hit that is um, b and this parallel is d okay so that's good we can use that information so 
by using that figures why is not moving give them a minute yeah so wind is coming from here this heat here so we can say this is b and this is d so b equal to 23 d equal to 24 i hope you understand that b equal to 23 b equal to 23 meters d equal to 24 meters h we calculated h before i believe i think somewhere in the previous uh, in this last week we calculated small h uh, you remember that 5.25 meters so we put 5.25 meters there um, let's say 5.25 meters uh, if i just simplify that uh, that would be 0 0.2 times 23 you get 4.6 0 0.2 times 24 you get 4.8 meters and this is 5.25 meters so you get 4.6 meters as a a so 0 0.25 and a square that's what we need to find so 0 0.25 times 4.6 meters square so uh 4.6 sorry yep so 4.6 square times by 0 0.25 you get 5.29 now the area is 2.28 that is the area meter square is less than or equal to 0 0.25 a square which is 5.27 meter square so therefore it is okay we can use the table right? because this condition is satisfied so we can go back oops oh i close it sorry all right he's starting it up ah nice and quick okay so here uh, we are satisfy these conditions by the way that kl factor only use when you have a very small area okay when you want to calculate they have a nice figure given on the next page here look at that when you are trying to achieve they have give you some guidance here you can see b and d also given here when you put the arrow here b and d arrow same same thing here the same figures that you can use it in small a and all these this guidance is given here so basically we are interested in here positive pressures windward wall we are interested wa1 so if you have a wa1 somewhere you can find wa1 wa1 so you can see this wa1 perfect right that's what we are looking for we have this area stained glass windows and then area is less than that is correct proximity of the edge anywhere we will take kl equal to 1.5 we are on the windward wall so we take it 1.5 as a kl I hope you understand that that will increase our pressure by 50 percentage so 1.5 because we are doing it for small area and then kp uh, by the way kp is let me talk you through this kp what is kp kl okay if you turn the page here close 5.5 is a permeable cladding reduction factor for roof and side walls again it's applied for the roof and side wall only and they are deal with claddings okay we, we we are just dealing with the windward wall so we take it k p equal to one so if i have these all the values here then i can plug this value c fig e c fig e equal to c p e um, then what was that k a k c e k a kce kl and kp now cpe points positive 0.7 that will control whether is the is a push or pull so you have positive 0.7 ka value was one because you remember that is apply only side wall and and uh, and the roof ka equal to one uh, kce combination factors one kl 1.5 if you remember that local pressure factors and and permeability is zero so the external pressures factor c fig is 0.7 times 0.7 times 1.5 you get 1.05 c fig e there is no unit for that now external pressures is equal to we have equations there uh, 1269.6 c fig e so 1 2 six nine point six uh point six times by one point zero five equal to 
1269.6 so you get 133.08 pascals right that is the external pressure coming on to that window right physically 133.08 pascals so that is the pressure coming on this window due to the westerly wind on this window on the external side not from the internal side from the external side am i correct right is going all right in that case uh, yes one triple three pascals that is the external pressures coming on to this um, one now let's say we have a um, uh, 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 internal pressures that we need to calculate what was the internal pressures equations same equations c phi i we can use these equations to calculate the internal pressures so internal pressures pi equal to 1 to 69.6 c phi i and then c phi i equal to now in that case c phi i uh, we have a equation for c phi i uh, which is the here so it's very simple one cpi kci so that's good two factors only so cpi kci by the way uh, when you have a internal pressures these external pressures vary the pressures here p1 pressure here p2 different pressures p3 p4 but external pressures only one you have only one pressures externally okay it apply everywhere only one pressure so therefore you have only this simple one okay that is not so so difficult there are not different pressures on the roof walls and all they are either suction is same or or this one so uh, of course we want to work for windward wall and cpi value let me check uh, uh, cpi value for that okay so how do we gonna find cpi value cpi value if you go back there are only two tables for CPI, unlike the CPE, you have six tables, as I mentioned, because there are six tables, because you have a external pressure, windward wall different, leeward wall different, roof different, side wall difference, and so on, right? So that's control CPE, which is the external pressures are different on your structures. But here, you have only two tables, and that's defined that all the internal pressures on the windward wall, leeward wall, or on the roof are same. Okay, so that's what. Now, what is the difference between these two tables? Uh, this is uh, like a closed buildings, no windows, no somehow sometimes you have storage where you don't require to have any windows and, and so on. Then you can use these impermeable structures as you can see on these figures. This is the typical structures where you have a houses where you have windows, doors, and so on. So that is the permeable. So there is a difference between these two tables. Um, office block and housing, which has a about 0.01 percent to 0.2, uh, have a problem because you never get the structures with uh, without leakage. There are some leakage, right? If you 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 don't have a structure which are fully sealed, right? Like this, it is fully sealed sometimes, but. Uh, you might have some permeability, so that's 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 what typical industrial and farm uh, buildings 0.5 percent of the wall area. So we we going to fall here because we have a we have windows and we have a we have lots of windows. Now we need to make an engineering decision here that what gonna happen. The 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 the, the problem is the problem that we going to make it here the engineering decision meaning that. If we wind is blowing from the west side, what would be the most effective one that let's say someone come and break all this window or keep it open and when the wind is blowing, then it will create the the the, the pressures inside that uh, negative pressures of that of that buildings uh, that is that is quite severe, right? And this one is very strong window. We don't want to break it, but let's say someone open the side window. So let's say uh, open all four windows. Let's say open open all four windows and doors on side wall right? so i hope you understand that only one wall okay not on the both side there is another one as well but we keep it close but someone um, someone just wants to test our structures Someone said, let's check the engineers, how strong they design it. And someone said, okay, let's strong wind is coming. Let's check their design. So in that case, we are here. 
we say that largest opening on windward wall no largest opening on leeward wall no largest opening on side wall so we will have these these columns to to play with right that is the that is the that is the largest opening on the on the side walls now okay that's fine uh, this arrow and pictures up now this is this is this is this is a uh, this is the one that is very interesting one let me zoom a bit so it says that ratio of area of opening on one surface look at that there is a ratio so you need to take the area of opening on one surface to the sum of total open area including permeability of the other walls and roof surface so what does it means let me tell you on the pictures what it says that you need to take the ratio you need to take the ratio of this wall let's say whatever you open so let's say this is the area of opening here on this wall divided by area of but don't consider this area now the the wall that you have considered as an opening you do you exclude that one and you take the area of all other walls so area of here just opening okay area of here area of here and area of all other win all others that you need to all, all other you need to take into account so that's what it says uh, that meaning of that 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 area ratio so let's let's go back and uh, and do it um, that area ratio okay now let's calculate the area ratio that uh, first one is the uh, uh because um, area of opening right on side walls how much that uh, how much is that so we will have this area which is 0 0.9 times 2.1 that's the door area so let's say 0 0.9 times 2.1 meter square plus there are windows that are open so let's say the windows are 1.8 times 1.2 by the way they are total area okay not individual window area so 1.8 times 1.2 meter square so what would be that answer so let's say 0 0.9 times 2.1 plus 1.8 times 1.2 you get 4.05 meter square so that is the first one that we uh, we found now in the examples it says that let's say there is a uh, 0 0.1 percent permeability for all other because there is no any other opening right because this window all other windows are closed there is no opening but look when the wind blows it's never be like fully sealed there are some leakages right so that is 0 0.1 percent let's say permeability. so let's find the area of of those individual areas let me find those areas for you so let's say uh, area of of the end walls so let's say you have let's say this area here area here on this side so its, it's area would be let's say this 5.25 meters so let's say um, you have a uh, uh, two walls because these walls and this walls both side so let's say uh, this area of front and back walls or windward walls and leeward walls you can say windward and leeward wall so you have two walls 23 meters width and 5.25 meters uh, height so let's say 2 times 23 times 5.25 you get 241.5 meters square what about roof uh, roof they have put one notes there i can show you in the examples that they say that um, that you have a you have to have a uh, apply pressure on this one uh, e examine the examine the half rafter spanning 12.6 meters on the rack so they say that portal frame spacing is 3.2 so they said that 12.6 only uh, that you are spanning so you say that they say that okay so from here they say that okay 12.6 only that you are these are rafters these are like a rafters on the roof and you say 12.6 that you need to take into account uh, and this is rack so 12.6 on on that one and this is the roof so we will have 24 meters 
times by this 12.6 and to this both side. So, so we have a second one roof, roof, uh, two side, 12.3 uh, meters times by 24 meters. So you get 24, you get 590.4 meters square. All right, uh, then you will have a, uh, uh, you have a uh, roof done, other side done. Okay, uh, now we have this side because we have left uh, another side because total six sides. So we have this side, right? Where you, you can consider that one as well. So 2.7. This height is 2.7 given in the examples. 2.7 times by 24, and this is one only. So that is uh, other side. 2.7 times 24, you get 64.8 meters square. So let's sum them all up. Sum them all up means 241.5 plus. 590.4, this is here, plus 60.8. You get 896.7 meters square. And let's say this is the area, total area. And let's say permeability is 0.1 percentage. So times by 0.1 divided by 100, you get 0 0.896 meters square. What does it mean? That if I take the area ratio, which is 0. Uh, if I take the area ratio, area over area, which is the opening, opening was 4.05 on the one wall over this 0 0.896 meter square. So 4.05 divided by 0. Point, you get 5.52. Now, if I take the 5.52 from the tables, uh, come back here. This ratio you get five four um, four point how much? Four point fifty two. So if you have a ratio of four point fifty two between three and six CPE value. So CPI equal to CPE of side wall. Okay, so that's good. Oh sorry, you can't see. Okay, so you have a largest opening on side walls, and you are area between four point five. So you come back here. So that is say that CPI, CPI equal to CPE of sidewalls. Okay, so that's that sounds good. So CPI of CPE of sidewalls. If you come back here, we have CPE value of sidewalls, and there is a uh, negative value minus 0.65, minus 0.5, minus 0.3, and minus 0.2. So we take it largest minus 0.65. Why we take it largest? Because look, what what does it says that? Why is negative different different values? So when the when the wind hit first, when the wind um, when the wind hit first, this will be minus 0.65 area. They will affect it for up, up some reason. Then it will flow through. Then it will reduce this minus 0.5, and then it will go to minus 0.3, minus 0.3, and then you go to minus 0.2. That's what it says right here. Minus 0.6. So when it's hit the wind then it will have a largest impact. And then when you grow, uh, it's like a frontline worker. These are the front lines that they will going to hit first. So they will give, give, we will put more, more this one. So they said that, okay, you can take, and this negative, meaning that we need to take it um, uh, internal pressure as a suction. So let's say that, that sound good. CPI equal to CPE of sidewall equal to minus 0.65, right? And then we have what else we have in the CPE, CFIC, or oh, KCI, combination factors. I think there is no required any combination factor. So you have minus 0.65 times by one. So minus 0.65. If I calculate that internal pressure, minus 0.65. Oh, sorry. 1269.6. Times minus 0.65, so you get 1269.6 times by minus 0.65. So 
So you get minus 825.24 pascals. So let me draw the windows like 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 a like a cross sections of the window. Let's, let's say this is a window. What is happening? What is happening? That these windows will have a push. How much external pressures we got? Uh, one triple three point zero eight. One triple three point zero eight pascals. And then we will have a we will have a pull. Uh, by the way, uh, we will have a opposite one. Let me go back to the sign conventions. That that okay. that this one is positive, but we have negative, so it's coming this way. So we will have a negative. Uh, let's say this is negative. This is positive, by the way. This is negative. Uh, how much was that? Uh, eight, minus 8, 25, 24. Minus 8, 25, 24 pascals. Now, when I combine the pressures, let's say pressure coming onto the wall, you no need to just do the plus and minus. You need to look at the arrow, okay? You need to look at the arrow because that arrow will going to tell us the combined pressures coming onto, onto that one. So we, we say that 133.08 don't put minus 825.24. This is wrong. It's not about minus. It's about showing this sign conventions that this one going this way, this one also try to pull. So this wall has a push from outside and pull from inside. If you combine them both, they are both pulling, right? So therefore you put plus 825. I hope you understand that. So if I just sum them up, one triple three. 0.08 plus 825.24 you have 2158.32 pascal pressure coming on to that glass windows from inside and outside okay combined pressures is there any questions all good all right any any overall questions how we come up with those pressures there are two pressures that we calculate what happens from outside when the wind hit your walls what would happen from the outside? It's gonna push or pull. That is is pre external pressures. And as I mentioned, there are six different external pressures you may experience. One on the windward wall, second one is leeward wall, two side walls, and two roofs. So there are there are total six different CP value that you might come across. Internal pressures always one. Okay. All right. Let's continue because there is one more. I'm not sure whether I may not be able to finish it. But let's see. Uh, we have a we have a stained glass window. Uh, we need to find a net uplift load per meter of the ultimate wind load on the highly loaded portals. Okay, so we need to we need to calculate that one on the on the roof. Now same same stories. We need to do it as we done it for. So this is an equations. Where was the equations here? Um, one two six nine. Um, pressure equal to um, 1269.6 C fig and that is Pascal's. That is the, our magical equation. That pressure equation can apply everywhere. The only difference is this one. This is different. Difference means depending on the different location, whether it's on the windward wall, leeward wall, side walls or on the roof. Now we need to work on the on the roof. So let's say we want to calculate the external pressure on the loop and internal pressure on the loop. External pressures 1269.C fig E. Okay, Pascals. And C fig E, whether it's the external pressure or internal pressures, this does not change. It's always these equations, which is C fig E. Where is it? Uh, here you go. This is the equations. That equation C fig E can be applied for, for, for any, any wall. So that's Equation, let's copy again, CPE, KA, KCE, KL, and KP. Now, C fig E, now we need to work out this individual, CPE, for, uh, for the roof. Okay, let's go back and CPE for the roof. Do you remember there are six different CPE? You may stay back with me for five minutes and then I will finish it up this story. OK, so because you, tomorrow maybe we need, I need to take you through again. So we have a CPE value of, um, of a roof. So we have a different roof. 
Now, we have a, uh, uh, a roof height of 5.25. So if you if you if you if you have a uh, roof value, so we we uh, I, I will tell you this h on d ratio and all. So alpha you can calculate alpha is less than 10 degrees. So wh how do you gonna calculate alpha? That you can just calculate. I think they are easy. So if you have this this roof here which is 23 meters and this alpha value that you can take it uh, let's say 23 divided by 2 so that is this distance and this height you can take it uh, they have given you that height so you can get this height h so 10 alpha alpha equal to 10 inverse of this height i think you know and 23 divided by 2 so that would be less than 10 so you have this this 10 degrees so you have this 10 degrees alpha less than 10 low slopes okay now um, in that case we will have a all alpha alpha less than 10 h on d ratio if you calculate h h is already we know 5.25 d less than or equal to 0.5 in that case we will come across here and we will find these different values as i mentioned when the heat when the wind hits on the first one it will be largest pressure so largest this uh, uplift so minus 0.9 is the one that we're going to take it what what basically minus 0.9 represents basically it says that basically it says that when you have a when you have this one when your wind is hit the this corner here you have a highest uplift like this minus meaning it's going out right pull and then it will reduce as you go down okay so that is the minus 0.9 is representing. So you have CPE value is minus 0.9. KA, KA value. Again, let's check it out. The KA value that uh, we have a uh, KA value area reduction factors. Of course, we have an area reduction factors here. KA uh, because it's 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 roof and side walls, and we need to work out for the roof. Now, what is the area of the roof? Uh, the area of the roof is area of tributary area of the roof by the way is 12.6 times 23 where is 12.6 and 23 coming from if you look at that uh, half rafter story that i explained you that you have a 12.6 uh, half rafters and and uh, 3.2 is coming from here because the spacing of the of the rafter so what what is the spacing of the rafter? It means that if you have a, uh, if you have a, where is the pictures? Uh, 3.t is equal to uh, this distance. So from here to here, this spacing is 3.2 meters, the first rafters, okay? The portal frames uh, that you have it, have it on that one. So that is, uh, that is the tributary area. If you can imagine that you have a, uh the area that you have 3.2 that is experiencing uh on the area is kind of like this okay so you take a, a half here and half here so that will total will be 3.2 that is a tributary area that we are we are talking about so 12.6 is this distance and 3.2 is this distance so that's area we're going to give me uh, 12.6 times 32, you will get 40.3 uh, uh, meter square. Now, if you go back to the standard here, and 40.3 is between this one, you can do the interpolation here, you will get 0 0.88, okay? I'm not showing you that interpolations. So, Ka is equal to 0 0.88. Uh, local area factor Kl is 1. Uh, I already showed it to you that the action combination factors KL and KC equal to zero. There is no combination factors and the permeability factors also are zero. Okay, so there is not uh, any, any any permeability uh, cases. So uh, C fig E external pressure equal to one to 69.6 to 69.6, sorry. 1 to 69.6 C fig C fig external 
equal to 1269.6 CPE, CPE, KA, KCE, KL, KP, right? So 1269.6 CPE value was minus uh, 0.9. KA value was 0 0.88, we just got it. KCE is 1, KL is 1, KP is 1. So if you just work it out this one, the external tracers you will get minus 1005 Pascals, right? Meaning that it has this uh, external pressure pool. Now, if I go back to the internal pressures that you will, we will get it, uh, as I mentioned, internal pressures only 1. So P, internal is equal to 1269.6 cfic cfic i and cfic i you will get it here i will not write it now i will straight away say cpi times kci and kci equal to one we don't have any combination factor we are taking one and cpi value as i mentioned there are only only two values that we're going to to take it now, uh, to get the maximum values, we need to have that, okay, let's say everything is everything is closed, okay? All walls are permeable. Let's say you have these situations that you have all the walls are permeable. So we take it the worst case scenario that you have a, let's say, minus 0.3 and let's say you have zero. So we take it positive value for worst case scenario. So we take CPI equal to zero. So in that case, CPI equal to zero, so 1269.6, CPI is zero, and KCE equal to one. KCI equal to one, so internal pressure is, is, is zero. So uplift pressures, if you want to work it out, what does it mean? That if you have a roof here, then you have a pressure going outside, like that, pulling the roof, which is minus 005 pascals, and there is a zero uh, inside. So if I combine that pressures, I would have a minus 1005 pascals, uh, let's say plus zero. So you have minus 1005 pascals uh, coming onto the, onto the roof. And if you want to calculate uh, how, much, uh, how much pressure is, uh, let's say minus 1.0 kilo Newton, uh, kilopascals or kilonewton per meter square so let's say kilopascals now how much how much uh, how much uh, coming on the one rafters so that is the that is the rafter here that is the rafter here that is the rafter sorry that is the rafter here now the the pressure is coming on to these areas like this this pressure is coming on to these uh, minus uh, minus one kilopascals. Now, if I want to calculate the UDL load on this one, so we just need to divide it by the spacing between this. So, uh, kilo newton per meter square times by 3.2 meters. So that is the uh, one. So you have a minus 3.2 kilo newton per meter as a as a UDL load coming onto that particular raster. 